Good evening. Uh, we're getting uh, close to that time of year again when uh, what we refer to as Mission Sunday uh, will be uh, the date for Mission Sunday is October 16th. And on behalf of the, uh, the mission committee, we'll be asked that you be thinking about that and how you can contribute to that uh, as the funds we collect on that day um, go a long ways in the works that we support both here at home and abroad. And um, so wanted to let you know that is coming. Uh, we, between now and uh, Mission Sunday, October 16th, you're going to be hearing from our missionaries directly. You'll be seeing uh, short videos. Uh, at least we've asked them to keep it short. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, they like to, to talk a lot about it. They're excited about their work, but uh, we have asked for some short videos so they can speak directly to you. Uh, and number one, just say thank you for the, what you've done and, and tell you a little bit about what they're doing. And so you can look forward to those. I know that I am, and uh, those will be uh, most likely starting up uh, next, uh, next Sunday all the way up to Mission uh, Sunday. We'll also, uh, we're going to be blessed to have um, uh, several of, I say several, two, three, maybe four of our missionaries come to speak to us directly. And uh, really excited to be able to get them uh, in front of you uh, to present lessons, to talk about their works, various things that each of them will do. Uh, but we will have some of our missionaries uh, over the next coming weeks uh, uh, addressing the congregation as well. Uh, tonight, uh, we're lucky and fortunate to have uh, John Orr with us, uh, who will be speaking with us tonight. He, he's from Home Mission. Um, I wanted to kind of give a, a, a brief bio of John and, and who he is and, and some of the things that he's done, but uh, he's married to his wife, uh, Susie. Um, they have five children, uh, one son, and he has a son-in-law that are full-time preachers. Uh, his youngest son, um, Jonathan is working with him uh, with the home missions work. Um, his education, Abilene Christian uh, University, along with Preston Road School of Preaching. Uh, he's been in the ministry for over 50 years. Uh, John, that's be commended. Uh, thank you for that. Um, John and his family have worked eight years with the church plant in Needville, Texas. Uh, he's also the director of the Needville School of Biblical Studies. Uh, John also served as the evangelism uh, minister for the Faith Village Church of Christ in Wichita Falls uh, for eight and a half years. Uh, he's currently the director uh, of Home Missions, and uh, he's also a writer and a speaker and has held several workshops um, and campaigns around the country. Uh, he's the author of the book, I Died Last Night, uh, which is available uh, on Amazon. So. Uh, so with that, John, I invite you up, and uh, we look forward to, to hearing from you this evening. Well, thank you. I was trying to figure out what was going on up at your uh, in your podium. Looked like the Terminator came here. I didn't know. <laughs> Please, uh huh. He's going to pass around. Uh, piece of paper and, and if you would like to get our newsletter each month it's free and we'll email it to you if if you would rather have a hard copy please write that by your name but he's going to be passing it out and if y'all would pass it around uh, to everybody else uh, did we start did you start that oh okay we're good we got Eight things missionaries wish their supporters knew. I found that on the uh, internet. I thought that'd be great. We love you. We thank you. We're praying for you. <laughs> and we want to give back to you. How about those things? Well, that's not the eight things that you need to know about home mission. There's some things that I know that you've been hearing about the Lord's Church in America, and they're not good. But there are great things going on out there. And there are great plans for the future. But these are the bad things. Over 70 churches of Christ in America are closing each year. 111 closed in 2020, and we have not gotten the final results from 2021. One group predicts that by 2050, we'll lose two-thirds of our churches in America. 
Does that alarm you? It scares me to death. Less than five baptisms a year per church, and that's being generous. Only 10% retention rate. We are losing over 70% of our preachers. More congregations are without elders. Over 60%, Phil Sanders said, of congregations in the United States don't have elders. Only 5% can successfully hold a Bible study of the congregation. We are losing over 70% of our youth, and new preachers are not taught to be evangelists. Now, I don't want to be a bearer of bad news, and I don't want to be lamenting over that, but we've got some great news, folks, because some of these things are starting to turn around. We have worked with over 400 churches in 46 states in the last seven years. Not just my wife and I, but other evangelists like Jim Lucas, who came here tonight. Jim is our new director of operations, and boy, did we need him. And, uh, and he also goes out and does uh, work uh, as an evangelist as well. An email we recently received, and you're thinking, well, what, what churches are you talking about? Well, here's one of them. Is there anyone, a woman wrote this, is there anyone who could help our church? We are a small congregation of 11 members. We currently lost an elder in our church, and we only have one male leader. We do not have a preacher, and now we have been told that the church may have to close down. In fact, he flat told them they were going to close down on what they call Easter Sunday if they couldn't find a preacher. He said, uh, I watched your, she said, I watched your evangelism videos and they were encouraging. I know there is much more that I can do to help our church and our community. We really need help in the area of evangelism and preaching support. If there is any way you can help us, it will be such a blessing. Thank you for all that you are. Well, my son Jonathan went out there on what people call Easter Sunday. And when they found out they were going to have a preacher, especially a young preacher, they had 37 people show up. <laughs> and they've been averaging around 25 now, and they have three males. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're getting there. And my son, with the help of the church in Callisburg, and I'll talk about them in a minute, went out and did a VBS and had 26 kids from the community show up. This is a community of 1,000 people or less. Another church told us they did not want our help five years ago. We offered our assistance free of charge, as we do all the churches. Our assistance, our materials, everything. Instead, they hired another group who charged them several thousand dollars to teach them organizational skills. They were meeting in a relatively new building. Which is the results of that building, of that church? The one on the left or the one on the right? That's right, they went belly up in June. The only good thing out of that is we're working with the Cedar Hill Church of Christ trying to help them build their building. And they gave us all their pews and their sound system and saved them $100,000. And Cedar Hill's been meeting in a funeral home for the last umpteen years, and they're not growing. People have told them, I'm not coming to church in a funeral home. That's just, I, I just can't do that. I don't know. I thought that was a dead issue by now, but anyway, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> so what does Home Mission do? We rescue struggling congregations. Now, when you're thinking of a strongly congregation, what size are you thinking of? Well, we've worked with some of them as small as five and as large as 2,000. Can I repeat that? We've worked with some as small as five and some as large as 2,000. I had a friend of mine in the, in the congregation of 2,000. They put him over the new Christians, and he said, I remember that you had something for new Christians. I said, we do. He said, I want it now. I said, okay, we'll send it to you. So you see, there are needs that be, need to be met in every congregation. 
no matter how large or how small it is. We're getting a lot of calls from churches about 60, 70, and 80, 100, 120, and they used to be 300 and 400, and they're saying, we, we've got to stop the bleeding. We've got it too. We work to rescue struggling congregations. In the July edition of the Christian Chronicle, the, Bi uh, the Bible, no, not the Bible. The Christian Chronicle said, everything about home mission is evangelism. We know that a church doesn't change overnight, so we have tools to give them to help them evangelize, and we hope within five years that 30% can hold Bible studies. That's our goal. We were listed, they listed about seven or eight agencies, and we're the, we were the only ones that said we work largely with conservative churches. We thank them for that. <laughs> we do not go to progressive churches. One man said, I can say without hesitation, Home Mission has given us the tools to encourage, equip, and evangelize this town of 1800. Without their intercession, we wouldn't have been here as a church much longer. Grayville, Illinois. Jonathan Orr did a launch session at the Callisburg Church of Christ in January of 2022. The preacher, Ben Willingham, recorded these remarkable statistics. The average attendance for January was 47. Then the habanera was implemented. That's a... a uh, visitation and contact record keeping system uh, that we show them how to do. Jonathan did the launch session, that's our first session. The average attendance for f February shot up to 68.75. Boy, I mean, this guy was exact. He must have been accounted before. Average attendance for March was 72.75. I don't know, have you ever seen 75th of a person? <laughs> The average attendance for April was 96.25. Can you imagine? And sometimes they go over 100 now. Praise be to God and God glory to Him. Now these, these aren't normal. By the way, they just reported two more baptisms today. Praise God for what's going on in that town of 400 people. Now you're in a town of what? 4,000? 40,000? 400,000? I mean... You know, uh, I know a church who basically took Church of Christ off their name in a town of 200,000, and there's no Church of Christ there anymore. And it's not up north, it's in Texas. I know another one that closed up in the middle of 50,000 in their town. But it can change. It can change. And we plan to go back into those towns within a year or two and start the church all over again. But we're going to have to have help from larger churches to do that. And we'll talk to you more about that in the future. Uh, we also have started doing follow-up on disaster relief assistance, uh, a disaster relief efforts. I noticed that you supported a truck. We've been to uh, that in Nashville there uh, Warehouse, and that's one of the most remarkable things you've ever seen. They are so organized. They can, they can uh, load a tractor trailer with food in about an hour. And they're headed out, and they'll go to a place where a disaster is, and they'll be there first before the cameras come in, and that's when the Red Cross and Samaritan's Purse come in. And then when the cameras leave, they leave. And then disaster relief comes back with beds and appliances and everything else. Do they get notoriety on television? No, because we're the Church of Christ. <laughs> we're a cult. We're mean, evil people that never help anybody but ourselves. I just want you to know that. <laughs> but you know something? I'm so proud of what they're doing. But the president of, of the Board of Disaster Relief, John Miller, told me, he says, for years we've been looking for a group to come in about a year later and train the congregation on keeping new Christians and then coming in and following up on these people. We're working now with uh, six congregations. We have two more that we have to go to, Jim, I haven't told you about, in Louisiana. 
We monitor relief efforts, and as we have evangelists available, we contact the church about a year later. We come in and teach them the new Christian follow-up, the habanero system, and work toward follow-up on all the prospects they have. See, the habanero system, actually, if, they don't, if they're not going to go out and teach lost souls, we're going to pour the habanero sauce down their throat and get them to, get them to tighten up. Now, actually, it's a kit, uh, a record-keeping system, and we work toward follow-up on all the prospects they have. This is key. A church cannot grow if they don't grow their prospects or their contacts. And the habanero system teaches you how to grow contacts in ways that you've never thought of. We have already seen the results from two of the churches we assist. One has gone back to the contacts four years ago and had baptisms. They're still having baptisms. And that's without a preacher, by the way. And the following is a letter from that church. Hello, John. It's a Dear John letter. I hope that this letter finds you in good health. I wanted to follow up with you to address our discussion regarding the follow-up we provided to our disaster relief effort in June of 2018. I believe it was late last year, 2021, that we began our follow-up with a list of about 500 families. Did you see that? Don't go to sleep on me yet. 500 contacts that they have. And so we got them to start following up on them. And they had been assisted with food, clothing, and appliance. This is a church in Westlaco, Texas, right four miles from Mexico. The family contacts we have made so far have been friendly, and the people recall the help the church provided did make a difference. I would personally add that the Habanera Ministry from Home Mission would provide a good system to follow up with contacts made with families that are receiving disaster relief. We are currently using it in an, our disaster relief follow-up. We are also using it to follow up with our monthly door knocking program, and so far it has used, yielded two, now three baptisms. This, I got this letter back in May. Andy Downing, Westlaco, Texas. And they're still fired up and going out every Saturday. God bless them. We also provide leadership training. And by the way, let me go back to this. We don't have enough people to help, do, help these churches that have 500 contacts. And if you go to their door and, and the Church of Christ gave them beds and appliances to cook on and a refrigerator and so on, and they said, we'd like to talk to you about God, what are they going to say? No. Listen, for 38 years they've been doing this, and for 38 years we, the churches haven't had the kind of follow-up that they need. God has opened a tremendous door for home mission. And so as we try to get more, we need more evangelists. If anybody here would like to help with evangelism, or what, would like to be a home mission evangelist and be trained to be one, or would like to help with uh, gospel sharing, and I'll talk about them in just a minute, or would like to get together in a group and devote one week a year to coming and following up with gospel sharing and knocking on these doors, these people that will look at you with great favor. It won't be like cold turkey door knocking because you're already in, we're already in their house. We're in the house with food and clothing and, and with, with appliances and bedding and all these other things. We're already in. We just need the people to help us do it. And gospel sharing will come. If, we, if you can get a group together and decide on one week a year, you tell us what week that is. Gospel sharing will come in and train you, and there'll be a double dipper out of that. Not only will you go and get to share the gospel with many people, but you're going to be more fired up to come back here and share the gospel here in Louisville. Isn't that wonderful? What a great opportunity. Can I get more than one amen out of that? <laughs> Thank you very much. And we also offer leadership training. We went this morning to the Cold Springs Church of Christ in Lancaster, Texas. They're really starting to make a difference. Uh, 
they sent us a note just to say thank you for its part in helping us reinstall elders. We have been without elders for 10 years, and with the help of men like Dean Kilmer and Tom Betacek from Home Mission, we were able to work through the process and gain three new men to help lead our congregation. Both of these men, Tom and Dean, Dean's from uh, Brown Street in Waxahachie, Tom is from the North Texas area. Both of these men from Home Mission have passed away since we installed elders this past Sunday, January 16th, 2022 but they will always be remembered and appreciated for their guidance in this endeavor. We hope many other congregations will take the leap of faith and call on home mission to lend them a hand in whatever their endeavors might be. We have to get older men that are retired or semi-retired because that's all we can afford. (laughs) And we have an expiration date, you know. Last year, we lost four of our evangelists to COVID, and three others had to leave for other reasons. We're training new ones. We can't train them fast enough. I don't know what we're going to do, but I know that God is going to provide. We really need about 50 evangelists. (laughs) Right now, we have seven and four part-time ones, and we're working on getting a lot more. We also do evangelism training. While we provide on-site evangelist training with preachers in the field, we are wed or have also... What kind of nonsense is that? (laughs) I've got to go back and redo this thing. We also have started an evangelism training school at the West Freeway School of of, uh, Church of Christ in Fort Worth, Texas. This is the church where they had the gunman come in three years ago, you remember? My wife and I'll never forget because we hid under a few when he pew when he killed two of our brethren. That congregation, because of the the shooting and COVID and the preacher leaving, got down to sixty people in attendance in December of twenty twenty two. So the elders said, you better come do some of your home mission workshops here. (laughs) We're not gonna be over home mission anymore. And I'll be if they didn't grow by 100 in one year. And they're ready to get, they're working on trying to get back up to 200. So praise God for what he's done. And the congregation is really working hard together. We have four students and we just gained another one. So we have five students now for our first year. It's five months of training and five months of being in the field doing on, on the job training. Whatever field they want to do and the congregation that wants to support them. And we have about 15 great evangelists that are teaching. People like, I don't know if you don't know some of these guys, maybe Jeff Jeff Jenkins, you know him? Phil Sanders. Uh, Jeff's going to be teaching expository preaching, by the way. Uh, Except to the ladies. We'll teach him something different uh, for the ladies that come. Uh, Then we also have uh, people in the east and people in the west. James Sanderson from Brown Street. uh, Several other people that are are really good evangelists. Uh, But we also teach the congregation on the spot too. We went to one congregation in Iowa and taught them an evangelism method called the rest of the story. And on Wednesday night, before we left, five people were baptized. And they baptized 26 people since then by using this study, the rest of the story. We call it a Bible study with training wheels because uh, you can, um, all the text is written out and uh, the scriptures are written out in the New King James. And the person that holding it reads the text The person you're holding it with reads the scriptures and then the questions, yes and no questions, true and false questions are asked. There's not many of them. There's one introduction and two closings and then if they aren't baptized at the end of the three lesson uh, period, then they go right into the foundations 
and usually they're baptized no later than the fourth lesson in foundations. This has worked for many years. Uh, we just have this, we just put it in simple terms and we can train anybody to use it. We also connect co larger congregations with additional assistance. This was a picture of the VBS in Elba, Alabama. Any of y'all know where Elba is? It's right next to Enterprise. You know where Enterprise is? Has some of the best Mexican food you've ever eaten and some of the best Cajun food you've ever eaten. And they're the bow weevil capital of the world. <laughs> they have monuments to the bow weevil. Even the Ronald McDonald is in a bow is a bow weevil at the McDonald's <laughs> restaurant. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. But anyway, uh, they uh, the church in uh, Killen, Alabama, uh, in in uh, the Florence area, went down to go and help them with their vacation Bible school, and they had over a hundred people in the community that showed up every night. And they went back to some of their, pro their contacts they had eight years ago from disaster relief. And they got 18 people to come uh, to the 10 adults and 8 kids to come to their vacation Bible school. Now, isn't that something? Eight years ago and they still remembered what the Church of Christ did for them. Wow. Sometimes in life we need some help writes the preacher. We have recently found a team willing to spring into action and be that help. Home Mission, led by John Orr, is a team with a heart for serving God and others. He and the team have led workshops and helped us develop the plan to follow up on a large number of contacts. John is a great encourager who even challenged us to use contact information from a 2015 floody, flooding that occurred there in Elba, Alabama in a special way. And as a result, we have seen some of those people at our recent VBS. The home mission team would be a great addition to the great work you are already doing. Signed, Philip Box, preacher at the Elba Church of Christ. After a congregation has had two workshops, the launch session and the circle of influence, and have five people that are trained to do the new Christian follow-up, the Foundations for Disciples, and attained over 100 contacts, we bring in another group called Gospel Sharing Ministries. We meet with them in Palestine, Texas every year, and we meet with them for training and for education and also to encourage our brethren. Disaster Relief is going to be there this year, and also speak to us as well as New Life Behavior. And so if you have an interest in gospel sharing or, uh, or uh, what's the name of our organization? Oh, Home Mission. Then please come, let me know after services and I'll give you the times and everything. You won't have to worry about food because those people feed you morning, noon, and night. We call it a 10 pounder. We do this at no charge to the congregation. So how are we funded? Caring congregations like this one and loving individuals keep us going. What would you do to save the Lord's Church in America? It cost us about $2,000 per church, per visit, average, including materials. In the past seven years, our evangelists have assisted in some way with over 400 congregations in 46 states. We just haven't been to South Carolina, believe it or not, although we've got a church that's thinking about it. We haven't been to um, two of the churches in the New England states, and we haven't been to Utah. But we will someday, God willing. But we have been to Hawaii and Alaska. I didn't get to go to Hawaii and Alaska, but we've had evangelists that have gone there. What is the purpose of home mission? What is our biblical mandate? Well, in Titus 1 and 5, Paul said, I want you to go to Titus, who was a traveling evangelist, just like we are. I want you to go and set in order the things that are lacking. 
We go to a congregation either once or twice a year, whenever we, however much we can. We do not get involved with their decision-making process. We are their servants. We come to wash their feet, so to speak, and to help them in any way that we can. According to Acts chapter 11, verse 19 and following, Barnabas was sent by Jerusalem to Antioch to encourage, equip, and evangelize. And that's what he did. And that's what we do when we go to a congregation. And I want to close with this thought. Psalms chapter 50, verse 10 through 12. Sometimes things, family, people weigh us down to the point where we can't we can't do anything. Sometimes we think we're afraid of the future. Oh, we're worried. Well, I better say what I got back because, man, I don't know what, I don't want these guys in Washington are doing. I may lose everything I have and, and everything. I might be sitting out on apple carts, you know. Uh, you know, we worry, we worry, we worry. Let me remind you what God said in Psalms 50, 10 through 11, through 12. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand years, hills, I'm sorry. I know all the birds of the mountains, and the wild beasts in the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine in all its fullness. And oh, by the way, the breath that you breathe, that's mine too. And the money in your bank, that's mine. The cars you drive, those are mine too. They belong to me. This wonderful church building that you meet in, that's mine also. The elders and preacher and deacons that you have here, they belong to me. They're gifts to you to equip you for the work of ministry. They're mine. The weather, that's mine too. You see, when we get to worrying about things and thinking about things and holding back, we forget who it belongs to. And God may give it to you and God can take it away. Just ask Job. In a blink of an eye, can you imagine having those four bad reports within less than a 24 hours? And then his wife coming up to him and saying, why don't you just curse God and die? Brothers and sisters, I don't know what the future's going to be like, but I know who holds the future. And God says the future, your future, my future, that's mine too. If you're here tonight and not a Christian, or you're a child of God that's been holding back what are you holding back and waiting for? Are you a child of God that's, that's renting more storage buildings so that you can put more junk in it? Then what are you holding it back for? One guy had, a, had a, an illustration with a rope. There was a 100-foot rope, and at the end of that rope, it was painted red. And he said, this is your life, and the rest of that rope is eternity. And, and this little bitty piece on that red part of the rope, that's your retirement that you're saving up all your life for. And God said, that's mine too. And so if you haven't fully given your life in everything you have to Jesus, remember, Jesus says, you're mine. Please come and give yourself to Jesus fully as together we stand and sing.